Okay guys, so I believe that I made what is called a breve this morning. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert on coffee. I would like to be. I do study it a little bit in my free time because I really do love coffee. But I believe, you know, you make like a latte is like a shot of espresso and then you fill the rest with milk. And you add whatever flavor you like. And a breve is like the espresso, but instead of adding regular milk, you add cream. So I added the eggnog, which is a creamy type of consistency. So I believe I made a breve. But again, I am not a thousand percent sure, but I am pretty sure that this is called a breve. So I'm gonna taste it. Very good. Very good. So I'm debating what to make for breakfast. I either want to make these like chocolate rice cakes or I want to make oatmeal. Essentially I kind of make them the same way. Like this I had peanut butter and strawberries and this was planning to add peanut butter and strawberries as well. So it's like do I want chocolate added or do I just want oatmeal? And that's what I'm trying to decide here. Um, so that's rough. I'm having a rough time. Hmm. This also takes longer to make, and that's also why I'm like, mmm. Because this is already, like, I just spread the peanut butter, add the strawberries, we're done. But this, I have to, like, boil it and everything like this, so, hmm. We'll see. guys so let's go ahead and do advent calendar we are on day three i can't believe we're like almost done so um here we go day three. Ooh, we got a this isn't even beauty it doesn't look like it's vital proteins the heck okay collagen peptides 10 grams of collagen per serving for skin, hair, nails, and joint support, very much needed. Um, Grass-fed, pasture-raised, it's unflavored, it's a dietary supplement. Let's see, so how do you use it? Combine one packet with eight ounces of liquid, mix thoroughly. Store in a cool, dry place. Hmm. All right, well, maybe I will add this to something today. I'm not really sure. It's claiming to do a lot of things, and I'm like, okay. Like, a dietary supplement. Huh. I'm so confused. Okay, well, that's very interesting to be included in my advent. I understand like the collagen thing, the hair, the nails, the skin, but like, I don't know. I, I'm totally for like beauty from the inside out, like inside also reflects how the outside works. I'm totally about all of this stuff, but I just am like, 
it's just confusing me that it says it's joint support and like the thing about grass fed pasture raised like what do you mean like use this product as a food supplement only do not use for weight reduction well anyways that's what was in advent day three i'm very shocked about this um hey guys so as i'm uploading i just noticed something it is saying vlogmas 17 that the upload failed and i'm barely noticing this now and i just uploaded day 20 and i don't know if i should upload day 17 again and then it's like out of order i think they're already out of order because when i did a mass upload day 9 like day 10 since it was a shorter vlog uploaded before day 9 so they're already out of order anyways so i think i'm just gonna upload day 17 again um because i i don't know i don't know what to do because now it's like not on there i just noticed and it looks like i skipped a day and i don't want to skip a day and i have it filmed and edited and everything so it doesn't make sense for me to not upload it so i guess i'll just upload it after day 20 and it's gonna be totally out of whack and i'm really sorry but it is what it is so i'm gonna do that i guess Alrighty guys, I am currently getting ready to go. Um, I cleaned up all morning and so now I'm getting ready to go to um, uh, Kendra Scott. Like I told you guys the other day, or not the other day, yesterday, that I was going to go make a custom jewelry set for my grandmother for Christmas. Um, so we're going to go do that and I think it's going to be really fun. So I'm really excited. Let's go. Alrighty guys, just got back from shopping. Um, we uh, custom made my grandmother's set. I showed you guys a couple of clips of that. I can't show you guys the finished pieces because they got wrapped there at the store. But I also stopped by Lush and got some stuff that I actually want to use one of them tonight. Um, I really want to take a bath. So I have I got this one. It's a sleep bubble bar. Look at how big it is. It's like huge. Like look at it compared to my head. It smells so good. It's um, This one was $12. I thought that was a pretty good price for how huge it is. Um... Because the bubble bars, you only use pieces of it. Like, you definitely do not want to put this whole thing in the bath. It will be bad to do that. Um, so, I'm just going to use, like, little chunks at a time. Um, I'll probably use this one tonight. If not, I got a bath bomb. Look at how this bath bomb is every little girl's dream. Like, it's stunning. I had to buy it because I've never seen this one before. It's a princess carriage, you guys. Like, literally, it's pink with, like, gold glitter in it. I don't know if you can see, like, you can obviously see, like, the yellow. But that's all, like, glitter, basically. Um, well, not basically, it literally is. It's all glitter. I don't know if you can see it very well. But all of that yellowness. There you go. All of that yellowness is glitter. So, and it smells like, like, strawberry, but also, like, floral. Like, I don't know. I don't know what scent it is, but it, it was too pretty not to buy. So, I had to buy that one. So, I'm going to use one of these. Now I have glitter all over my hands. Um, I'm gonna use one of these tonight, either the bath bomb or the bubble bar. I think I might use the bubble bar tonight, but we'll see. So, that's what I got at Lush. I just had to get a little something for myself since it was like pretty much um, right next door to the Kendra store. Alrighty guys, so it is 3.30 and I just made some eggnog hot chocolate. If you guys kind of want to see how I did this on Monday, um, that's Vlogmas Day 20, I believe. 
um, I did eggnog hot chocolate that day. Um, this one I didn't make the same, so it's not as good. The way I made it with like frothing the eggnog and stuff, that was a lot better, but um, but this one's decent. I mean, it's all right. The other one was better though. Um, so I have that right there. And basically I wanted to sit down and I don't remember what vlog I said that I would sit down and talk about wedding stuff today. And I know um, some people are looking forward to me talking about wedding stuff. A lot of people in my life are really excited for me. I'm really excited. Um, me and my fiance are really happy and everything. So, um, but the thing is, is because Christmas is so close to when we got engaged, we haven't, we don't really want to put all of our focus into wedding stuff just because Christmas is a big holiday and of course we we celebrate it and we want to um, focus on that right now and then of course next week is New Year's blah 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 so it's just it's a lot we just right now we're taking the time to enjoy being engaged we're happy we're spending time with our families everything so um, the only thing that we have talked about really is basically who's going to be in our wedding party and that is literally it so that is all we have discussed it is the only decision we've made and we have not um, asked them yet because again we're waiting till after the holidays to um, get started on doing stuff but I did um, I do have some stuff that I've been doing personally um, also, the two questions I've been asked the most is one, when are we getting married? Like if we've set a date, when it's happening, blah, blah, blah. That's like the number one question I get. And then the other one is if I knew he was gonna propose. I don't know why those are the two, literally everyone who's told me congratulations has asked me those two questions. Like not necessarily every single person, but everybody who has seen me in person and said, oh, congratulations or whatever. Like the next question they ask me is, have you set a date and did you know that he was gonna propose? So I want to talk about that a little bit on here just because those are the two questions I get asked the absolute most. I don't know why, but I'm going to talk about them on here. So first, um, do we have a date? No, we do not have a date. Like I just said, um, it's Christmas. Um, and the other thing is we won't have a date until we know um, what wedding venue that we are going to pick because the thing with it being so close to the pandemic is last year was the pandemic and so a lot of wedding stuff has obviously been pushed back a whole year and it's a little bit crazy um, in that aspect um, with booking because things are booked out very far or what seems very far because everything is behind if that makes sense. So. Um, with that being said, I don't know how hard it's going to be to get something soon. Also, Charlie and I are not in a super duper uber big rush. Like we're not like, oh, we need to be married in 12 months. Like we understand that this stuff costs money. We understand that we are also very young. You know, I'm 21 and he's going to be 21, um, month after next month. And so we're, we're very young. We're happy where we're at, everything like that. We're comfortable. We're good. Like we are okay yes we're gonna get married we want to get married as soon as possible whenever the time is right etc etc um but we're not like uh we need to be married in 12 months or we need to be married as soon as possible like we're we're okay with whatever happens we um are happy doing it when the time is right and in god's timing and stuff so no stress no nothing like that so no worries okay so that's question number one i will say um, I really do like the fall, um, so that's kind of what we're shooting for, and um, yeah, that's really all we know. Um, we kind of did talk about a day, um, but we weren't for sure about it, so we haven't decided. And again, it also depends on the venue, when they're available, things like that. Um, the second question, did I know? I did not know that he was going to propose on that day or whatever but I do um have a th I did have like a feeling um just because Charlie is not the kind of person that's like oh I want to go do this at this he didn't give like a really specific time but like the fact that he wanted to go at night and he was like really particular about the day and like he was being really weird that day as well and really weird or, or not really weird but a little bit weird on the trip um, he had this backpack that he carried around with him everywhere because he like did not want the ring to leave his side, especially because we were in a place that we didn't know, you know, the hotel, he didn't want it, nothing bad to happen. So he carried it with him 
in this backpack that I carry around the whole time. Um, of course, until we got engaged, then he didn't really carry, he didn't carry the backpack, but, and it didn't really cross my mind, but looking back at it now, um, like at the time I was like, oh, that's a little bit weird. Like now looking back, I'm like, that's really weird. Like Charlie really isn't, he's a simple guy. And the fact that he wanted to like carry a backpack and he was like, oh, we can bring snacks in here. We could put chargers. Um, was definitely weird but i didn't register like that part didn't register with me at the time but now looking back that is registered um but yeah so that's that um he did a really great job picking out the ring here's what it looks like it's a pear shape with a halo and um that's exactly what i wanted back in february we had kind of talked about you know, on Valentine's Day, just like as an activity, I wanted to go to jewelry stores and look at rings and decide what I liked for whenever he decided. I didn't expect him to do it like the next month or like whatever, but um, I wanted him to know what I would like. Um, so we did that back in February on Valentine's Day and I found what I liked. This is not one that we looked at together at all, but it did have all the components that I wanted and he actually picked this out because that was one question I did get from somebody was, oh, did you pick out your own ring? And no, I did not pick out my own ring. He picked this out himself. This is um, not a ring that we have looked at together ever. So he went to the store and picked this out himself. Um, and he did really great and I really, really like it. Um, what's the other thing? Okay, the other thing that was really weird that he did, but this was like months ago, is back in, I want to say it was January or August, somewhere around there, um, he asked me one day, like, oh, how do you feel about getting married? And I was like, oh, yeah, well, like, you know, we had talked about it before, so I was like, oh, why are you asking me, like, and so I was like, yeah, of course I want to get married, you know, and we had that conversation, and then a couple months ago back in uh, September October like really kind of shortly after he actually gave me a ring that was very special I'm actually gonna go pull it out really quickly by the way I haven't told any I don't think I've told like this whole story like what I'm telling you guys right now to anybody um of course I think like other than my mom <laughs> but like anyways um so back a couple months ago he gave me this ring I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm, I'm trying to be careful with it because it's a little bit delicate, um, but basically it has a purple stone and then it has diamonds on the side and it's gold. Um, it needs to be redone for uh, a couple of reasons, but first off, I wanna tell you the story before I tell you why I don't wear it right now. Um, but basically back in May, his grandmother came to visit us here and we had talked about getting married. I don't know how the conversation got up, but um, how it came up, but we were talking about getting married at some point in our lives, not necessarily like soon, but um, I, after that, like his grandmother got really excited, his mom got really excited, things like that. But we weren't like saying like, oh, we're gonna like plan on getting married or we're getting married soon or anything like that. But I don't know, I don't remember like what the conversation was specifically, but anyways. So I guess his grandmother had then given him one of her rings to give to me. So this is actually his grandmother's ring. Um, the thing about it is it needs to be resized. I have really small fingers. He even had to get this resized because they do not carry my size in stock um, in really any engagement ring, I don't think, because it's a really odd size. I wear a size four and a half. And so um, my finger is just so small. I'll, typically my rings have to be resized or like custom ordered or things like that. So anyways, this ring is far too big so it does need to be resized. We are planning on doing that um, sometime probably soon. And then the stone in the center is actually my boyfriend's birthstone color, it's that purple. So we wanna get this ring cleaned and sized and everything. But yeah, he gave me this actually on just one random day we just were having a really great day and stuff. And he said, um, you know, I was planning to propose to you with this ring, but I decided that, and he said this, I, I obviously had nothing to do with this. Um, he said that he wanted to get me the ring that I wanted. And so that this was the step like in the right direction, but like he wasn't asking me to marry him, but he was saying like, I'm going to marry you. So that's why I'm giving you this. And this is a step into the direction of me, like telling you I'm gonna marry you, but like, I'm, I'm not asking you to marry me right now, but this is like, 
to let you know and and i've had promise ring a promise ring um and but anyways like i was saying he gave me this ring as like saying like it was a step in that direction and basically like that he was going to do it and i've had a promise ring that i've worn for years um but this was like um you know his grandma told him like if this is the one you know like i wouldn't just give this out because i don't want just anybody to like have my jewelry so like this was like a really special moment because it was also like um i didn't know at the time but like he had let his family know that he was gonna be proposing to me um and so this was like i guess kind of like a hint that it was for sure going to happen um so I'd been kind of like on the edge of my seat, kind of like, okay, so like, is this gonna happen soon? Kind of like on the edge of my seat, basically. So, but yeah, but this happened a couple of months ago. Um, so there's that as well. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how that went. And then um, I don't think I talked about um, like the whole details about when he proposed, I had somebody ask me that as well like oh i'm sure you've told it a million times but like how how was that like give us the details and i was like oh i actually haven't been asked that basically what happened was um charlie really wanted to go to the water show at the bellagio which is um a hotel in las vegas nevada that's where we were vacationing and well we weren't staying at that hotel but we were vacationing in las vegas nevada so anyways basically the show happens like every hour every half hour like on the hour or half hour so anyways he wanted to go at night and he wanted to go so we made it to the seven o'clock show we actually got there around like 6 30 and it got to the bellagio got valet we went inside for like a second and then we went to go find like a spot to go stand at um to where we could get like a good view is what i thought what the intentions were or whatever which kind of were but anyways um and then um it, it just all happened so fast so literally the show started at seven we saw it for like a second we saw the water come up i saw i noticed that like the eiffel tower was a part of it and i was like oh my gosh look at that like so pretty um and then he got down on one knee and tapped me and i turned around and i was like oh my gosh and then the face i made i was like when I when he like opened the ring walk and then I just like bursted into tears and I couldn't even see the ring because I was like crying so it was like blurry um and so then he was like will you marry me and I said yes and then he got up he gave me a kiss and a hug and put the ring on me and and then literally like that was like I guess like five minutes and then um once we were done the show was over so like I don't know it happened so fast and then after that, we basically just went out to dinner in um, Caesar's Palace, which is the hotel right next door to the Bellagio. And that's just kind of what happened. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It was pretty quick, and, and but it was beautiful. It was amazing. I loved every moment of it, but it just, it happened so fast. Um, but yeah, so I'm so happy that I have like videos and pictures like to remember it by from like seven o'clock to 7.04 basically it was like the whole thing. Um, but yeah so that's kind of how all of that has happened and that's kind of where we're at and what what's been going on with that stuff so now i want to talk about some other things so i have a couple of books right here that i have been looking at in the meantime like i said we're not really planning right now because we're focusing on the holidays but just on my own time and stuff that um i'm kind of doing my research on things and things like that but charlie and i just we just haven't sat down and made decisions yet just because it's like i said like christmas we're preparing for that it's you know you guys know if you celebrate christmas it's a big holiday it's just yeah it's a lot so um anyways i have a couple of books here that i want to talk about that is wedding related stuff so first off i have this book which i got in vegas and it is stuff every bride should know by michelle park Liz Liz hopefully i'm pronouncing that right um i got this at the altered state in caesar's palace um i've only read like one page um but yeah so i don't really know much about this i've only read like the introduction and then what you should do first now that you're engaged um i've read a couple of pages of that but i haven't really read 
much of this one so I don't really um, have any information but I will keep like updating you guys about things um, as I want to continue like a wedding series here on my channel because um, I think wedding stuff is so fun I follow a lot of people who do wedding hacks like on TikTok and everything like that so um, I am going to continue to talk about this stuff so this is just the beginning of all of these things but um, I will let you guys know how this ends up being um, but yeah stuff every bride should know it's a pretty small book like my hand can fit around it and like I just told you my hands are tiny so it's a pretty cute little book um, but yeah, I haven't really read much into it, so I don't know if it's good or not. The first couple of things, they looked kind of good, but I don't know. There were some stuff. Oh, this one, six, six questions to ask your intended. And it says, like, questions that you would ask, like, someone that you're getting married to. And it says, do you want kids? What are your religious beliefs? What are your career plans? What's your finances look like? How do you show love? And how do you fight? And um, I wanted to touch on this really quickly because at first I was like, why would you not know these things already, you know? And um, like, I wouldn't, I don't think that I would want to marry someone if like, I didn't know if they wanted kids or not. You know what I mean? Like I, I would feel like if I didn't know that already, then I would feel like we were too early in our relationship to be getting married. But then I thought about it some more and I actually was like, you know what? There are probably some people that maybe they just really haven't thought about these things or had these conversations and so i was kind of like in a way even though for me i'm like oh why wouldn't you know this already i think maybe it'll be good like i think how do i say this i'm trying to find the right words um i'm thinking like maybe it's really good that it's in here because if there are people that haven't had those conversations yet um it's probably good that they're gonna have these conversations that that this book um, let you know that you should have those conversations before you get married just to, you know, to avoid um, future uh, surprises in the future, you know what I mean? Like, um, so I kind of was like at first, like, this is obvious dumb stuff when I started reading this. Um, but now I've, as I've thought about it some more, I'm like, oh, well, maybe, you know, if people aren't having these conversations, it's probably a good thing to make sure that they do. So, um, that's kind of why I stopped reading it at first because I was like, oh, this is so obvious basics that like you should have done this already. But it's actually pretty cool if you haven't, um, like if you haven't thought about those things yet, I'm really glad that it has these in like the be the beginning stages of stuff that brides should know. Um, the other thing that I read was like share the news, which we've already done, paint your fingernails, which I get my nails done every two weeks, so we're good on that. Um, get your story straight. It says people will ask you um, how you got engaged and maybe even how you met. So decide what you do and don't want to say. Um, this I kind of was like, um, I don't know, it's a little bit sketchy the way it's written. Like get your story straight. Like I, I get what they're saying, but I don't really feel the need to rehearse that or anything. Um, enjoy yourself. That's one big thing that we're trying to do um, throughout this whole process. You know what I mean? Um, don't promise invitations yet. This was one I really needed to hear just because, yeah, um, it says if someone asks if, they, if they'll see an invite, you can always reply with hope so, but we're not sure on details. Um, like your budget, that will unfold. Um, you don't want to have disinvite. You won't. You don't want to have to disinvite them later or feel obligated to invite them because you spoke too soon. So this was something that I actually was glad was in here and I didn't think about it. I was like, oh yeah, I should tone that down um not that I started like saying that a whole bunch but I did I did start saying that and I, I to some people and I just sh should have like toned it down just because not that I don't want to not invite anyone and I, and I still want to invite those people and that's fine but like that was a good reminder like oh but you know you are gonna have a budget and things like that so just be careful um, and then be vague about plans. And that's something, so it says resist, resist the urge to advertise your announcements the day you will have, even if you had your heart set on them when you were 12, um, you never know the plans will change. And that, that is one thing that, um, a lot of people have asked me a lot of questions and I'm like, I don't know. Okay. So like calm down and like, yeah, I think that that's like a common thing with people as soon as they get engaged or as soon as they get married, people just have so many questions like, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to set the date? When are you going to do that? Like, and it's like, I don't know yet. Like, 
come down and so yeah i've been very good about being vague because I, I really don't know um things yet and but yeah a lot of people ask a lot of questions um but yeah so this one i've only read those two pages six questions to ask and then things to do first or like to keep in mind so i still need to read um more about that the other one was how to insure your ring which charlie actually already insured my ring thank goodness because i was very like um insurance is like the first thing we need on this thing just just to be safe because things can happen and i don't want anything bad to happen um so yeah so i'm gonna definitely read more of this it seems pretty decent um but yeah i've only read two pages out of it so don't don't have a full opinion on that book yet however i do have a full opinion on this book right here because i have this is the one that i've been reading the most so this is wedding hacks it says 500 ways to stick to your budget stay stress free and plan the best wedding ever this is by maddie s s e how do you say this einstahart instahart i i don't know how to say the last name but um i'll try to link these below um but anyways this book is um from barnes and noble and I have read quite a bit of it. It is a very great book in my opinion. Um, I am almost done. I'm on the last two chapters. It has, um, it has six chapters in it. So I have read four of the six. And so anyways, the first one, the first chapter, it's broken up into like different sections. So the first one is organizing your budget and to-do list. And to be honest, when I first started reading this first chapter, it kind of was a buzzkill, not gonna lie. It kind of was a buzzkill, but it also brought light to the fact that <sighs> reality is reality and weddings have been made to look so extravagant on TV, online, basically everywhere. The whole wedding industry is a lot of money, energy, all the things, okay? And so it was kind of a buzzkill, but kind of like an eye-opener. And, and I'm kind of glad that it started that way because it was kind of like, okay, look, here's the deal. And so I kind of got that, that kind of like, oh, that kind of sucks, but also like, oh, okay, that's very realistic. And it, it kind of has my mindset in a very realistic place. And I'm kind of happy about that because now I don't, um, I don't feel like I'll be as disappointed. Um, I don't want to say disappointed. That's not the right word. But as like sh I, sh surprised, that's the word. I don't feel like I'll be as surprised as like how expensive things are and how like um, how much work things are and everything like that since I've read this book. So I really do recommend this book, but I will let you know chapter one is kind of a buzzkill because it kind of is. So anyways, just, just a heads up, but it... I do think it's a very good book and I think it's important to have this kind of buzzkill moment at first just because it is reality, unfortunately. Um, but anyways, off of that note, so I have gone through and up into numbers of like organization since this section is organization and um, budget. So it's it tells you like, so number six, here's this tip and it has a description of all of them. So I have basically just highlighted all the things that I feel apply to me or I feel that I will use. Um, and the rest, I, there are things that I'm like, oh, I won't need that. I don't want that. Like none of that. So I have basically went through and highlighted stuff. And this is, again, this is a really good book. I want to share a lot of stuff from this book with you guys, but I'm going to kind of hold off right now because I don't want it to be so long because there's a lot of pieces that I've highlighted. It's a pretty you know, thick book. Um, I'm going to compare the two though, just so you know the size difference since I was saying this one was small, but not, not really relevant to what I'm speaking of right at this moment, but I just, I just saw the book and had to show you the size difference. But anyways, um, so I will speak more into detail about this book later. Um, but yeah, it has, so the chapters are organizing your budget and to-do list. Chapter two is shopping for venues and hiring vendors. This I've had a lot of experience with because since I'm a photographer and I photographed weddings, I've met a lot of vendors, especially in my local area. So this I have the most familiarized with, but there's still good tips in here. Chapter three is inviting guests and asking for gifts. Chapter four is attendance and attire. Chapter five is reception and decor. And then chapter six is day of um, hacks. So 
really great book. I highly recommend if you're a bride to go to Barnes & Noble and pick this up ASAP. It's, it's a very good book. Lots of very good and useful information in that. Okay, the last book I have, which is also, no, oh no, this one's not from Barnes & Noble. This one's from Michael's Craft Store. Um, this big old guy right here. This is the wedding planner from Garter Studios. And I'm gonna actually flip the camera around and show you guys this on the table because it's it's a huge book, so I can't like hold it up and show you. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's a binder, it's very thick. Um, and here is what the inside looks like. So first off, the first thing it has is what style of bride are you? And then it breaks it up into, it tells you like all the different ones. So classic, modern, um, or classic, natural, modern, playful, or romantic. And then it kind of shows you what those look like. So here's a natural, a playful, um, a romantic, et cetera, et cetera, a modern. And then it shows you, um, breaks up like what different type of dress types go along with that style. Um, and then like, uh, things to keep in mind when dress shopping, the perfect fit, um, and things to be sure to ask when you're doing this, uh, money saving tips, um, what else, accessories that kind of go along with that stuff, um, shoes, lingerie, Purses, clutch, jewelry, garter, wedding party styles, bridesmaid dress styles. Like it has like all the stuff, right? Um, other tips, things about tanning, all that stuff like that. And so basically then at the end of every section, it has um, a place to take notes, which is really cool. But also it has a space for you to um, also put inspiration Um in there so I thought that this one was really cool this is the coolest one I have found so far um, but yeah and then it has the planning ones and it has like for you to write down websites descriptions of those websites usernames passwords and websites for stuff that you sign up for like your registry um, your invitations your the you know all the things um, so that's in here for you to keep track of which is very great and then also participants contact so you can have all your bridesmaids stuff and then all the groom stuff like information of, that you need on them um and then also like the flower girl the ring bear mother of the groom blah 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 um and then also all your vendors so the officiant the photographer the caterer the florist just like study everything's in one place you have all your contact information right here um and then it also has spaces for like other um things and then it also has like DIY business cards and this is really cool because you can hand these out to your vendors. So like let's say I go and I tour a venue and you know we kind of want to think about it but they say okay great you know maybe we can email you some more information. So then you can take some of these out, have the name of the bride and groom, their address so that you can, they can send you stuff in the mail. Like maybe if you book with them and then they need to send you paperwork. Um, the wedding date so that way they know when you know when that's going to be so they can keep that in mind and then the phone number and email so that they can contact you so I think these are really cool um, the other thing and then of course like I said at the back of everyone is inspiration and place to take notes so I really like that and then calendar this one's very very cool so it has a master checklist so this is six to twelve months four to six months two to four months four to six months or no weeks i'm sorry and then one to six weeks so it has it checked off with all the stuff that you need to complete like within these months so like here you would announce your engagement determine your wedding style set a date determine the budget create an initial guest list research and reserve ceremonial site um, research and reserve reception site select a wedding party and then shop for wedding gowns and then in six to nine months you'll do all of these things etc etc so I don't know very cool stuff in this one and then the calendar part so this is like the checklist part but then after you get through all these checklists there is a calendar that you can fill in with whatever month it is and then fill in all the things and you can like um, if you have like 
a dress fitting appointment or like an appointment to meet with the officiant or whatever you can like keep track of all those things in here so that's very nice this is why i really like this book because it's so detailed on like stuff like that and then again it has the inspiration and um the note taking part in this as well so then this part is also very handy this is the budgeting part and it actually has a graph and shows you like how much you need to spend on all these things so catering is the biggest thing which i would agree with so um that's where i'm going to kind of probably splurge or spend the most money charlie and i and then attire is 14 percent, so it's the next biggest thing again i would agree with that you know dresses are very important but also expensive um Entertainment is 10%. Again, you know, the DJ or whatever, very important. Um, flowers, 8%. Um, miscellaneous, another 8%. Photographer, 7%. This is, photographer is very, very, very big on my list. Like, I would say photographer is probably not takes, I understand that this is also by chunks of like how much things cost, but also like, this is this one's very important to me but um gifts and then um invitations uh facilities reception and stuff this is i would actually say is more than three percent it's probably a pretty big one and then transportation so anyways not too worried about transportation um for here where i live but i am looking into that as well um and then wedding budgets and estimates so this is like when you get estimates on wedding venues and stuff i can write them in like so i could say venue i could put the company's name so whichever venue it was put what they gave me for an estimate and then put whether you know it's a maybe or i really do want it or not and so this um comes out and you can actually break it up even further in here so um amount budgeted actual cost reserve date deposit paid blah 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 so that's really great and then again a place to take notes and also um inspiration so and then a guest list one i need to show you this so you can make a, a seating chart in here and then glue it on here and have it set up to what your venue looks like so i thought this was really cool this is gonna have to be like one of the one of the things more toward the end though just because and then again, a place to take notes, and it has inspiration as well. So, locations, this is another cool one, um, where it'll tell you different locations for like reception, um, and like different tips on that. So, yeah, lots of great reception information, and again, notes and inspiration. And then we have stationery, which is honestly, my biggest struggle because i don't really like a lot of stationery i've seen but um again it'll break up to what style you're doing and then it'll tell you um how everything needs to be so an outer envelope an inside envelope the tissue um the invitation itself the save the date card and etc so all of that and then again inspiration and notes then photography this is one um that's just the most important thing to me honestly i the memories from this day are very important to me. So anyways, um, again, the style and then also videography is in here as well. But um, this is stuff that I kind of, I already have my ideas and everything for. Um, and then flowers and music, all of that things. It shows you, you know, all the different um, information and inspiration on that. And then gifts. It shows you kind of stuff about wedding registries and um, and then you can also keep track of what you put on your registry, how much it is, and the description of it and everything like that. So that's really cool. Um, and then again, inspiration. I know on my registry I want a lot of home stuff. And then um, catering, this is one of the biggest deals to me as well. Um, and so it has a lot of information on catering and stuff 
cakes I have figured out somewhat or I have an idea I shouldn't say I have it figured out I don't have anything figured out but I have an idea on that and then I really liked that it had a honeymoon tab because when I read stuff in here I was like oh shoot I, this is kind of something since it's like so toward the end it's kind of like and since it's like not necessarily a part of the actual day I like um really needed to think about these things so Anyways, that's the whole binder. That's the end of it. It ends on honeymoon. And um, again, I have ideas for a lot of things, but nothing is set in stone. But this wedding planner book is going to be really helpful. I think I'm really, really, really excited. So um, yeah, this is going to be really cool. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Alrighty, guys. Well, that's all the wedding stuff we're going to talk about for today. Um, that's why I kind of want to save this one for like a vlog where I had less stuff to really talk about. I don't know if today was necessarily that day, but this might be a longer vlog than usual. But um, yeah, I'm excited to like get started on doing some of this stuff though. But yeah, I don't want to, I do want to talk more about this, but it's probably not in Vlogmas, probably in a separate video later. So yeah. Alrighty guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here so I can start editing it. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 23, I believe. Bye, guys.